This video is brought to you by my online kitchen design solution. More about that at the end of the video. Follow along as I take you on site and through my process of measuring, planning, and designing a new kitchen. My friends Lindsay and Mike are renovating their basement to include an apartment kitchen. They've graciously allowed me to come in and film and measure and plan out their new kitchen for their apartment. Thanks guys. First thing I like to do is draw a rough sketch of the space that we're working with so I can put all my measurements on and keep everything organized so that when I transfer these measurements to my design program, everything's neat and orderly and I can make sense of what I did. It also helps to take some pictures. This could be jotted down on anything, but I highly recommend graph paper or paper of some sort at least. We have these rectangles now in our pockets that take pictures. So whatever you write this on, whether it's on your hand, on a piece of wood, on a piece of paper, take a picture of it. It's in your computer, you'll have it. But it is nice to actually have a physical piece of paper that you can write notes on. This doesn't need to be anything spectacular as long as the measurements are accurate and you have a rough idea of what the space looks like. This is as spectacular as it gets. And the sink's going somewhere here. We're not gonna get it centered. Somewhere under the window, yeah. Okay. Right, like, I mean, I consider sink? it a dishwasher. I just don't think there's enough space. Yeah, I think you're right. One of the things you need to remember when you're measuring a kitchen is if there is gyprock rock or no gyprock rock on the space that you're measuring. It's always good to add that in mentally and on your paper. So for this space, there's no gyprock, rock and my measurement's 24 inches. So I'm gonna add a half an inch for that gyprock, rock so that I don't miss it when it comes time to design this kitchen. About measuring in gyprock, rock, this really is important when you're measuring a new construction, when there is no drywall on the walls and you're just measuring the studs. It's really important to allow that half inch for the gyprock rock or whatever thickness of gyprock rock that you're using, but normally it's half an inch. When you're measuring wall to wall, it's important to add an inch overall because you have a half inch on one side and a half inch on the other side. All right, I need my lovely assistant to hold this. Now I'm the lovely assistant. <laughs> It's important to measure everything in inches. Don't switch between feet and inches. Keep everything in inches so it's consistent the whole time. I mentioned this before, when you're measuring and you're reading your tape measure upside down, make sure that you flip it around in your head so that you don't write down uh, 35 inches and not 53 inches. It will definitely happen to you if you're reading your tape measure upside down and hopefully it doesn't cost you thousands of dollars like it's cost me. If you're liking this video, please consider subscribing for more kitchen related content. Thanks. Okay, and then we have a little bit of floating space here, but you don't want to come anywhere any further than that. Oh, okay. It's always good to measure the ceiling height so that you know how much room you have to deal with, especially if you're going to put cabinets over any appliances like your fridge. You'll see that I'm measuring the ceiling in a few different places to get an idea of how level the ceiling is overall. I want to find a low point if we're installing. This comes in really, really handy when you're installing to the ceiling because if the ceiling's not level, it's very important that you know that before you start installing so that you can plan ahead for that. This particular kitchen is not going to the ceiling, but it's a good practice to always measure your ceiling heights. And along with that, know what type of flooring the customer is installing. Because normally, not all the time, but a lot of the time, the cabinets are gonna be installed on the floor, and if there's no floor in the room at the time, you need to allow for that measurement. If the client has their appliance sizes, it's very important to know what they are, obviously, and if they don't know their appliance sizes before anything is ordered, you have to make sure you know what the appliance sizes are. You can't take it for granted because appliances all come in different dimensions, especially refrigerators. I've talked about it before. There's nothing worse than getting that refrigerator in the space and to realize that it doesn't fit. So make sure you get those measurements accurate before you start ordering and definitely before you start installing. And where the tape is is where you're coming? Um, Ish? Ish, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just because we can't move this close here. And never be in a rush when you're measuring a kitchen like this. No matter the size of the kitchen, no matter what's involved, take your time, double check to make sure you have everything. Because once you leave the site in your home or in your office, not having measurements or having things missing can be a real, a real hiccup. So you want to make sure, double check, take it from experience to drive hours to get one measurement. Um, wall cabinet here. I think she's only going with open shelves. Open shelves. So we are going with Ikea? Yes. Yes, okay. Double sink? Um, open-minded. Like you want an open-minded sink? <laughs> there's not much room, so like... Do you know what kind of color you're going with? 
Uh, probably white. White. Yeah. White kitchens. See, white kitchens are timeless. <laughs> Let me tell you something about white kitchens. They're not going away, people. Year on year on year, white kitchens are just taking down the industry. They're just never going to go away. So as you can see, this space is pretty small. Our mission is to make it as functional as possible. Remember, you want your kitchen to work for you. You don't want to have to be working in your kitchen. And no matter the size of the kitchen, it is possible to make it functional. Never sacrifice function. Put as much thought and effort into creating the space to be as functional as possible as you can. Uh, microwave range hood? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> maybe, but I, I watched a video and I thought those weren't... Uh, There's this there. guy I know on the internet that <laughs> says you should never have a yeah. microwave range hood. And you should watch one of his videos. I'll link to it in the description below <laughs> if you want to see that uh, video. I, I highly recommend not going with those. Anyway. Did you know that Ikea's cabinets are all an eight inch bigger than what they claim it is? So like if it's a 18 inch drawer, it's 18 inches and an eighth. Now I know more and I'll look even more knowledgeable. Yeah, you do. One thing to remember when you're talking about Ikea, <laughs> Since this client is going with Ikea, one thing you need to remember is that Ikea's cabinets are an eighth of an inch wider than they say they are. So an 18 inch drawer bank is actually 18 inches and one eighth. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but on a run of 128 inches, that can add up. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing Ikea cabinets. It is a lot easier for you and for me to go into a design program and change an entire kitchen layout. Super, super easy. Once it's installed, not that easy. That's why I always recommend getting as many design options as possible for the space. Even if they don't even make sense or they wouldn't really work that well or you don't like them, that's fine. At least you have all the options and you know everything. Plus it helps you visualize your kitchen space. The next step is to draw this up in my design software to get a 3D rendering and a floor plan so that the client can approve. It's always good when you're dealing with clients that you let them have the control. It's their kitchen, it has to be what they want. My job is to recommend, but it's also my job to give them the kitchen that they're asking for. There's a bit of give and take between what the client wants and what is actually gonna work or is needed in the kitchen. And you have to be mindful of that. It's not just about what the designer wants to put in and what's gonna look nice. And it's not just what the client is thinking and dreaming is gonna work. There has to be a little bit of back and forth to get the kitchen space to be functional and workable. Here we are inside the design program. All the wall measurements are added in, the window, and all the cabinets. And this is the agreed upon layout that the client and I came to. One of the things we came across is that they had a 36 inch wide fridge, which was really overpowering in this space. And so through the design process and showing them the different options that they had, we decided that a 30 inch fridge would work best because of the small footprint of this kitchen overall. Here's a picture of the final layout that they decided upon. They have their open shelves, some wall cabinetry, we were able to put in a full corner base and cabinets on the base, sink base. And on the peninsula, we decided to go with a shallow base cabinet to give us more room behind it for a couch and they still have ample room to sit at this breakfast bar area. And here's a picture of the final rendering for the client. And these 3D visuals are an easy way for the client to be able to look at their kitchen space and to envision what it's gonna look like. If you're planning a kitchen renovation, a new build, or just curious about what a new kitchen would look like in your home, my online kitchen design solution may be the right choice for you. There's a link in the description below where you can check out all the details. It's pretty simple to get started. You just send me your measurements and some pictures and we get started on designing that kitchen. I'm gonna take you through the process of different iterations of of what the space could look like in different examples with 3D renderings and floor plans, everything to get you started on the path to pursuing getting that project to completion. Another huge thanks to Lindsay and Mike for letting us come in and measure in their space. I really appreciate having people that support the channel. Thank you so much if you've subscribed and liked this video. We'll see you soon.